He asked the disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, or Luke Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But who say you? Who say you that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bartholomew, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Father, I thank you for your word. And I pray you will bless this gathering tonight that you bless all that are here. God, I just pray that you would speak to us. Strengthen us by the power of your spirit. Touch, Lord. Rebuke the enemy. Stand up against the power of darkness and of evil. We plead your holy blood upon this place, God, upon this church. And all the enemy here, Father, we ask you to have your way here today in the morrow, Lord. In the mighty name, in the holy name. Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. And we read here where Jesus is asking him, who do you say that I am? Or who do you think I am? Yes. Well, they said some say you're alive to some say you're Generalized one of the prophets. But Peter spoke up. He said, You're the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. Amen. The others just said he was a prophet. The others said he was a Jeremiah or Isaiah. Yes, amen. But Peter said, No. You're the Christ. Amen. And so he went on here and he said, Upon this rock, he wasn't talking about Peter. Uh -huh. You know, that made Peter's name to mean a stone. See, but Jesus wasn't talking about he's going to build his kingdom on Peter. He told Peter, he said, Peter, uh, he said, Get behind me, devil. Amen. Did he? And he said, you know, he said, when you're converted, then you strengthen the body when you're converted. He knew he was going to make it. And he had confidence in Peter, but he knew that he was going to die. He knew everybody that he knew what he was going to do. Why? Because he stood in the beginning and saw the beginning. Yes, he did. Stood in the and saw the beginning. Yes, he did. He said, I'm an alpha. I'm a man. I'm the beginning. I'm the end. I'm the first. I'm the last. Lord of the Lord, King of Kings, the man I am. Yes. I don't see why people can't see that. But yet he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build the church. I'm going to build my church. Amen. But he didn't just leave it like that. He said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail 
against this church. It don't mean we're not going to go through the battle. That's the truth. There's no victory without a battle. That's the truth, brother. Well, I want the victory, but I don't want no war. Well, you ain't going to have a, 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 a victory without war. That's the truth. <laughs> and we're in the war. Yes, we are. We're losing our nation as we know it. Yes, we are, brother. I've never seen the nation in the shape I'm here now. And the direction that we're going. I saw something I preached in Harrisburg, Senator's time. I got home late. I usually when I'm going off and preach. I usually get home late anyhow. Got in, I guess time got to sleep about two thirty. And but I got up early and I was just checking the computer. I'm not a big computer person, I'm just really learning how to do it and make, meet some people. And I use it to preach with, just like uh, Sister Stanks does. And when I was checking and I run on something that disturbed me to my core. I'm not 100% sure if it's true, but I've done some checking and I had three or four reports that prove it says it is true. But anyhow, I sat there when I saw this and I just got silent. And I began moving. They are serving in China now. You probably already know this, did you? More up on stuff. They got a bowl soup that they call it fetus soup. And they have a, a boiled baby in this soup. It costs 4,000 yen. It's about between. Five, six, and six hundred dollars of American money, and these big fancy up-to-do regiments showed to prepare a little baby girl, and it was cooking her with chicken. And when I saw this, it just brought me down. And I said, "Oh my God! Never in my life!" I told Brother Reed about it yesterday. I was get my chairs out of the tent I had a whole bunch of chairs this next next meeting over in Virginia. And you know we were just both I was shocked to my core. And they're eating it not because they're hungry, but because this is for the rich. They're eating it for their sex life. And I thought, God there's nothing I know more, Lord, than that. That's the truth. Unless you are cooking a live child for your sex life. And we are gone as a world, as an earth. Yes. And people are going to wind up. I thought, God, so what if God said in the Old Testament to wind them up? That's the truth. You know, they always have a problem with that. Always going to understand, God, why do you want to wipe all these people out? But he knows what people are going to do. That's the truth. He knows how low I know. that uh, nations and leaders and regimes are. Yes, so God, with his wisdom, is to stop out in the beginning. He didn't intend for Cain to kill Adam. No. Uh-uh. But that murder come in. Yes, it did. Through Cain, through the spirit of Cain. And we're living in the time now that anything goes. And I told my friend, I said, so wonder. There's tsunamis. So wonder. There's air fire tornadoes. So wonder. There's earthquakes. Did you know the earthquake that hit Japan? The parallel with Japan. Japan comes down like that. And on the ocean floor next to Japan, they have so many miles. The earth opened a mile. 186 miles long down in that ocean floor. And 93 miles wide. And 15 miles deep. That's enough to put a thousand Grand Canyons in. And when that earth opened up, it just died. It was shaking. The earth was shaking. And it shook open. All that white down into that giant mouth of the earth. And when it did, that's why the waters receded. They saw the waters just disappear on the shore. 
they went down into that hole in there. And then if the earth continued to shake, it's at nine point something nine on the metric scale. And then it shook back to death and slammed shut. When it did, the water shot up into the heavens. And when it did, it caused a tidal wave. 500 miles an hour. You saw it on the news. Amen. You saw it took everything in its path. Yes, it did. And you saw how it went all the way to Hawaii. And even in the coast of California, I got some friends of mine, and I saw it on the late, late news. And I called them about 3 o'clock in the morning, might have been 5, about 3 their time. And, and when they knew it was me, they said, my bags is packed. I said, get out of there. They live in close to uh, Los Angeles. I said, get out of there. Go to them. That is an idol. I said, get, you don't go in with a hundred miles. All you're going to be lost is some gas money. Go in a hundred miles and wait and see what happens. Hallelujah. And we are, uh, they tell me, somebody told me the other day that there are 400,000 homosexuals in New Orleans. I couldn't believe it. So wonder Katrina, like New Orleans now. Amen. And we are living in the, in the total deprivation of the morals and the, uh, the recognition of the Word of God. Yes, we are. Now people don't even believe in the Bible. They believe what they want, and, and what they don't want to believe, they don't believe. That's the truth, brother. But the Bible is the Word of God. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Whoa. But when I saw this now, I just began to weep. How about God? You know what I felt? I, I woke up the next morning. I was still think about. I felt a plague. A plague is going to hit China. But there are more Christians in China than there are in America. But they're underground. They're all underground. It's against the law to be a Christian. They put preachers in prison for preaching for seven years. They showed one that was preaching in a cave in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning. And they was down there, he was speaking that Chinese for And he and all of a sudden he heard, he heard that Chinese, he said, Jesus. And the people had their hands lifted, tears were flowing down their face. You know, God said, He said, I'm going to have a people from every nation. Yes. Every tongue, every village. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and you know what I'm just telling you? Uh, we're not on the moon in Zion. No, we're not. Hallelujah. We, we may look like we don't have no money. Amen. We may look like we're the hundred dollars. But let me tell you something. Dynamite comes in small packages. Yes, it does. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? Yes, amen. I want to change this out. My battery went dead and I'm running so fast it's not time to change it. Right. So hang on just a second. Praise the Lord. He said in verse 18, he said, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. You know, my dad used to tell me when I was a kid, he was a real smart man. You know, we got German background. His mom was more of uh, Indian and a little Irish, but a lot of Indian. But he said, what happens when an irresistible force meets an immovable object? Something that can't be stopped hits something that can't be moved. What happens? Well, it's like a nuclear explosion. Yes, it is. Well, I got news for you. This rock that Jesus is building his church on is not moved. You can't move it. There's not a devil in hell that can move it. There's not a devil in hell that can pulverize it. There's not a devil in The devil's done lost his estate. He's done lost his position in heaven. And the only thing he's got is what God lets him do. Well, the devil do this, the devil do that. Well, I got news. God tells the devil how far he yes, can go. Yes, it is. He got it to, to Job. He said, if you consider my servant Job, that there's nobody like him in the earth. He said, but I'm going to consider him now. <laughs> he said, there's nobody like Job. The devil said, skin for skin, I'll make him curse you to your face. God said, you go ahead, but you cannot tell him. You can't take his line. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the devil had a heyday on Job. But it was all said and done. When Job went down to the bottom, praise God. He still held on to his integrity. Hallelujah. I went all over. Job had 25 
surprise as much as he did the enemy. The devil didn't destroy him. The devil didn't bring him down. Can I give an amen? Amen. The truth. So I'm telling you here tonight, this rock can't be moved. This church ain't going nowhere. People may come and go. I like what uh, you know, Brother Charles says something's coming, something's going, and I'm gonna keep on the mowing. <laughs> and that's the truth, but I've seen I've been pastor now for about 15 years, I've been preaching for 35 years. And started in 1976 and preached in 29 states in this country. And I've seen a, a crowd has changed many, many times. But guess what's the same? The Word of God yes, it is. is the same. Yes, it is. The Word of God is the same. The Word of God can't be moved. It's been tried. It's been, they tried to burn it. They tried to drown it. They tried to eat it. But they can't do it. The devil tried to burn up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But we know that it's good. They didn't even have the spell of smoke. The only way that it's my own, praise God, was the Lord to have time. Glory, it's the truth, anyhow. So the kingdom of God is here. Yes. It's here. It's here. And it's going to be here. Yes. And it ain't going This is forever. The president's come and going for four years. I think God this is fixed to be gone. Amen. <laughs> I told him I wish I could become the president. I'd straighten this country out. I could I could put a ban on anything in China. Because if we we got everything you Walmart got now going from China. I take a few off the stock market and I put it back like it was now the kids you can buy for twenty three cents a gallon. I used to fill up a sixty six Chevrolet for three dollars. Now you won't even get a gallon of gas for three dollars. I could fill it up. I could buy a quarter of oil for a quarter. I used to have a mowing business when I was a kid. I bought a brand new line on it to road out a gallon of gas, a gallon of water, a town, and I go all over the neighborhood cutting yard, cut a whole yard for two dollars. But you know what? Our country is messed up, but the kingdom of God is a sin. Oh, somebody praise you here. Can I get an amen? Amen, yes. I want to go here to uh, 2 Corinthians. And I got a few scriptures I'm going to read here. In the 10th chapter of 2 Corinthians. In the 4th verse. For the weapons of our war. Uh, just do anything. Go. I stand all day and all night and they come in and try to preach. What you gonna preach? About the crown? <laughs> they used to call them circuses and corny, but now God's people's at the carnivals and that's the circus. But they used to just people didn't go do all that. That was more 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 uh, worried about uh, seeking God, praying people felt gifted when they didn't pray and seek God. Now they don't know. And look what's happened in the country. See, it's just a few. When, when God told Abraham, Abraham said, Lord, said, if we could just find 10, 50, started out with 50. He said, would you spare it? God said, I would. But now we've got him down. You can't hardly find the real Christians. I know that God told him, I said, he said, I got 7,000. They ain't bowed their knees to fail. But you know what I'm talking about. Few and far between are people that are holding up this plan, this blood stain. This holy thing. Very few were holding it up now, and people would let them go to the beach and to the casino and let a party and take dope and mess and crack and get drunk and to go to the house of God. People got to swear their soul for a beer and for some, some kind of marijuana, some weed. Hallelujah. Then to go to church. Man, when I was coming up, we scared not to go to church. Like a little song says, kid said when he was a kid he had a bad drug problem. But it wasn't a dr drug you think. He said he got drugs every church in the county. 
Everywhere he went, he just mumbled, you know, when I was coming up, we was in church every night. My daddy had tents, and he had uh, took us, man, we was coming out of that church, and find out about the Holy Ghost. These big tents would come to town. I remember Brother Adam would come, Brother Terrell, and all these big Terrell Lowry. Ones would come to Mobile for the big revival. And we was there every night. We'd be in church till sometime one or two o'clock in the morning. Mom would make us a pallet on the ground, which fall asleep and take us and go home and get up and go to school the next day. Uh-huh. Nowadays that don't happen. You, you go past nine o'clock at night and they uh, they start getting busy. Start looking at their watch. Uh, I got to go home, got to do this, got to do that. Praise God. But you know what? There used to be some that we used to be tapped into the power of God. We used to be tapped into the Holy Ghost. We used to know God. The Bible says Daniel 9 32. He said the people that do know their God, they shall be destroyed. And exploit the world. Oh, change. God is the same. Yes, he is. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, he is. So he said, I hear you said, my weapon. Of my word. But not clown, you can't do it through programs. No, you can't. And I'm home, I heard a, a thing on the radio and they said we're gonna have a shut in for the kids. You know what a shut in was? Have you ever heard of a shut in for the children? They have them, I don't know. I mean I'm not familiar with it because I'm not from the world system. But they shut in at a skate room. And they shut in down at the water farm. All them bikinis supposed to be shut in for God. And so we got a banana split that's a hundred feet long. That's been shut. And that's where we've gone to. The church has failed the country. Yes, it has. The church has failed the nation. Yes, it has. And the only way that we're going to save our nation is to get back to prayer. Yes, that man. Seeking God, standing in the four hour night. Amen. That's what I believe. My daddy right. told me when the Great Depression in the war in, in the forties, the church life would be on all night. Then World War II, he was a kid. He said you would hear people in there, the mamas and the grandmas, in the altars and the lights would be on. And they'd be there playing all night long. Yes, they would. Saying, God, now mercy on my son. In Japan and in Europe. And God gave us victory. We come back and they had victory. Hallelujah. For in New York City. After we won the war, World War II. After the Japanese surrendered. When they got that bomb, they knew it wasn't playing the game. Hallelujah. God made us a win. But now, we don't have the victory. We got a military in our full of human section. We got a legislature and a Congress and a Senate. And a president don't need in plan. He needs in plan to, 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 to Allah. But Allah is not God. They have a name God. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. And you know what? That's what I believe in. Praise God. It's Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord. And he said right here, he said, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Through, through, God. through God. Through God, you'll find the answer. Yes, amen. Through God, it's all going to come back when we get a hold of God. People say, well, the Lord left. No, he won't. You left him. Some people say, their life goes crazy, and they get mad at God. But God can leave them, they left God. Their, their seat on the pew did. Somebody else had to do. Somebody else had to come to church. Somebody else had to come to church and pay the time and do what they used to. Somebody else had to come cut the grass. Somebody else had to come paint the bill. Why? Because they, they went out to Long Island Land. They went out to party with Amen. You know I'm telling you the truth. It's the truth, brother. It's the truth. People have lost. Yes, they have. And then they say they try to get better. You need to get better at yourself, not God. That's the truth. And I get an amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands and pray. The Lord, we love you. Oh, thank 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 you. Oh,
He said, for the weapons of all warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Listen to that, mighty. Mighty through God. Amen. To the, what? Pulling down the what? Stronghold. That devil has a stronghold on America right now. But it can be broken. If God can get down to business, we can wait what's going on right now. We can get this, turn this country around. Next two or three years, we can turn this country around. Yes, we could. And get our country back. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Who me to John chapter 15. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Look here at John chapter 15, verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is a husband. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. See, once you get to a plateau, if you're doing good, you're bringing forth, you're doing what God uh, calls you to do. He's not going to let you stay there because He knows your potential is high. God, the Bible says, them that He calls, what? He qualifies. Them. Yes, He does. And if God calls you to a high position, and people say, well, I just can't do it. Let me tell you something. God wouldn't call you if you couldn't do it. Amen. That's the truth. So He's perfect. Yes, he does. To bring forth more fruit. More fruit. Can we get an amen? Yes, amen. Now you're clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Look what he said right here. Verse 4. He said, Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it what? Abide in the vine. See, people don't understand. You're not going to get your life in front of the TV. You're not going to get God by not coming to church and staying home. See, so many people today have lost their faithfulness. But he said, I'm coming back for the good and what kind of service? Faithful service. Uh -huh. That's what I don't see no more. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Faithful. And when you're faithful, see, the, God always brings this scripture to me. He said, he's a reward of them that what? Diligently yeah. seek him. Amen. Jeremiah said, when you search for me, what? With all your heart. He said, back when you're going to pray me. God's not going to go to a half offering. You can't give. If you make $1,000 a week or, or four or five thousand dollars I don't think make four five dollars a month. You know, working these different jobs. And you give God $20. You ain't paying your time. You're not giving no proper offering. Amen. Ten percent of what we make belongs to God. Yes, and plus it all. Uh -huh. He's where is the man of God? He's an entire and it all. Yes. So when you pay your ten percent, you're you're honoring God. But when you rob me, God told me people didn't pay their tithes. They're gonna be lost. Amen. Especially once you come to that knowledge. Amen. And you know you rob God, you go over to the epistles, he said, No thief. We're going to enter in the kingdom of heaven. So if you rob the God of your time, then that's that's worse. Uh, you'd be better off to go to the First National Bank up here and run in. But when you stick a gun on God and say, you know what, God, I'm not giving this long job. I know it belongs to you, but I'm going, I'm going to the beach with it. You have robbed God. Yes. And so when we do all these things, we got to realize that God is looking down. And he's looking down, and when he found Noah, he found a just man, yes, a did. perfect man, yes. a man that was walking in the rays, praying God yes. of righteousness in his path. And what he knew of that day, he walked in it. And yes. when he walked in it, he found what? Yes. Savior, yes. God. Yes, and when 
when you drive back with God, you get getting mad. Amen. You got to pray once the tire comes. Guess what? Your lights stay on. But when you don't pay your bill, and you let it go a couple months, and that next month they see things that says your uh, power be cut off on such such a day. This ain't fair. They do it now with that. I don't know what to do. You have to see. And if you don't pay, guess what? That man come out there in that little truck. Now they don't have to do it. They're all computer now. They put all the meters in our members all computer. They can cut you off from the, from the main office just by putting on the computer. Da, 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 da. Mark Sprinkle didn't pay his fire bill. Whoo! No! All of a sudden you're up there. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Trying to do something and life go dead. And you think, oh! Church people wouldn't give me no money so I couldn't pay it. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you don't pay your power bill, you don't keep up the uh, one place you hit it the little box that's for the mind. Yeah. It's the little things that people do it is. that they lose connection. Uh-huh. Have you ever had a car that you went out there one morning, you know, you've been going busy, busy, busy for months. Your car's cranking, fine one, and then you, you don't really, you know, a lot of people say, oh, man, they know how to do a stick of gas and all that. That's it. They don't check the oil. They don't check the water. They don't check nothing. And they go into work and wide open, and the poor old car's over here dying for, for a little bit of uh, maintenance. And they go out there one morning, it's good and cold again. He goes, click, 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 click. Why? 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 A lot of times the battery might still be good. All the neighbors still good. But it's got corrosion. Oh, I'm over it, building up like a tent. You ever seen it? Uh-huh. You got to get a wire brush. You got to take it off. And a lot of times it bolts. It's just eat slap. But you got to get by street. And you gotta pull it apart, and you might put some battery in and all that. And you need it all cleaned up. But it's neglect. Yes, it is. Now, you know, that's what the Lord showed me in Savannah. I had a tent in Savannah one year in the 90s. He showed me, he said, more people would go to hell because of the sin of neglect than any other sin. The Bible said, How shall we what? Escape yes. if we what? Neglect. So great a salvation. See, a lot of times it ain't the sin you commit. It's the sin of omission that you've omitted. You say, well, we was going to church. We just didn't feel like going here. We didn't feel like going there. But we become like the people that Jesus said. They all made excuse. When one consent made excuse here, one consent made excuse there. So we can't come. Once I bought some land, i got to go check it out. Why would you buy land without even looking at it first? That don't make sense, does it? No. Why would you want to say, well, I bought some options and I got to go through Why would you buy options without checking them out? And one of them said, I'm ahead of wife and I can't go. <laughs> Two fools and a hen face. <laughs> I don't know. Can I get an amen? I can get amen. Hallelujah. But all these excuses. <laughs> causes us to get disconnected. Yes, he said, what? He said, it's your sin that has separated you from your God. Amen. Amen. We got to get reconnected. That's why I'm preaching and doing it. He said, get reconnected to God. And when we get reconnected in prayer, when we get reconnected in the house of God, when we get reconnected like we had it with our first love, I remember when people would play in the woods and they would have prayers in the woods and they would hear prayers before church and after church. But today there's no prayer. Today the, the, the ray of water on the way to the church. It's a prayer, brother. I told him, I said, this is the talkiest generation that's ever lived, but they don't know how to pray. That's a Ain't that crazy? It is. They know how to talk on a cell phone, they know how to do, 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 do. <laughs> Smartest generation we ever had to take prayer. They'll tell you, I don't know how to pray. Talking. And then they 
Call and say, what's up? The other guy on the other side, what's up? It ain't done by nothing. Billions of dollars spent on cell phones. And it's all a bunch of fools. And I know people use them. I use mine for God's work. But it looks like we can talk, 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 talk all day and all night. And now the computer's wide open. And on that computer, they'll tell you when they go to the bathroom, they'll tell you when they sneak. I ain't never seen nothing like it all my life. We went to McDonald's a while ago. Whoop you do? Who cares? You talking about what? Where's the walk in the floors? Where's the those that are reaching out to God? Where's the Jack Cole? Where's the A? Jack Cole laying in the ditch all night. Long. The dude was all over him. He'd be out there and fly to wake up. He wouldn't be in the bed. He wouldn't be in the kitchen. Wouldn't be nowhere. She'd go all out and find him out in the yard laying in the ditch. She thought he was losing his mind. She said, what's the matter with you, Jack? He said, I don't know. He said, all I know is I feel the weight of 20,000 souls on my shoulder. He said, but I don't know what to do about it. It was a spirit right out of him. The yes, Spirit pulling him into that ministry, into that deep. Let's call him the deep. Yes. But today, people ain't got no deep calling the deep. Ain't no deep calling the deep no more. That's the truth, brother. That's why the church houses are empty. Exactly. That's the truth. Church houses are empty. All the buckets are empty. Amen. But they can't do nothing. Amen. You can go to all this work, tell them to put up a tent and have a Bible. Nobody ain't interested, but I guarantee they're interested in what's going on. At the rock concert. Yes. They're interested in going to see what Jimmy Buffett is doing. Yes. They're interested in see what Britney Spears is doing. Yes. They're interested in see what Mindy Lohan is doing. They're interested in 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 what Mindy Lohan is doing. they Notice what he said. If. Yeah. Yeah. I preached the whole message one time. Sister Brenda on if. If. If I had only slowed down, I wouldn't have had that ready. And I wouldn't be on my way to heaven right now. <laughs> if I had to let the stove on the house with the burn down. If I took my children to church. We wouldn't be having this funeral right now. You're not a prayer when I start to pray. When that gut feeling pull me to pray. If I had done it, yes. it would be in a shake for you. If I've lost the connection, they're not a fire meeting. That's the truth. Oh. Hey, Walmart, Mall, Beachland. Yes, they are. 90% net. Amen. You know what I tell them? This is what I tell them. This is what they want from the beach. That's true. That's a little bit of exaggeration, but half of them make out of that right there. I see. And I tell them the truth enough. It's a great And then we wonder why the morals is gone. We wonder why children end up children having children. That's it. And then they end up at the abortion clinics. Yes, it is. All because people are not abiding. He said, He said, Abide me in verse 4, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. I've got some great vines that I planted. 
three of them didn't make it because of the dry conditions, but I got one. You can't go out there and cut all the little branches off that vine and expect the grapes. Ain't nothing gonna happen. You didn't, you didn't cut it off. You got to stay connected to the vine. My arm won't work if it ain't connected to my shoulder. Yes, <laughs> it's got to be connected. Yes, it's got to be connected. Yes. Binding me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except that binding the vine, no more can you accept your binding me. That's why I think we're praying for the devil to go and he don't go. That's it. That's why a lot of times people's prayers ain't answered. God answers prayer. And if we are pleased in the uh, 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 one place he said, he'll make you enemies at peace with him when you please us. And when we please him, then that's when he moves. When we honor him, when we put him first, so well, you know, the guys want me to go hunting. We in a big fall revival, you know, that's hunting season. Don't have no flowers in the fall. They worship duck hunting. They worship deer hunting. Yes, they do. And oh, God help us if it's football. Football night. No, I can't go to church on football. Man, we're having, what do they call it, the Super, uh, super Bowl. No, we can't have church on Super Bowl night. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. From all y'all out there. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl. Now, the whole damn Super Bowl party is the church. They shut the church. Yes, now, I have to bring a concert. They're doing it a long time. So, we don't have it on Sunday night because I can go to other preachers and church. I mean, other, other churches on Sunday night and other churches on Sunday morning. And then other churches can come see me at 3 o'clock. I do. I sometimes I go down and preach three services on Sunday. And I'm talking about churches in the far apart. But if I had church on Sunday night, or if I'm in a revival, I ain't going to say, well, we're going to put the revival on hold. And I, it's Super Bowl night. And we're going to have potato chips and hot dogs in the back. We're going to have a great big screen TV you can watch. And we're just going to have a big time. I'll just come on out. It'll be jam-packed. Yes, big boy, brother. He said, if you take one step, God will take two. He will. You take one step toward God. He said, draw nigh to me. And he said, I'll draw nigh to you. Uh-huh. It don't take long to get a hold of God. That's it. Take one good path, you can get a hold of Jesus. Just turn your life. You don't have to live in sin. You don't have to live in defeat. We don't have to live, praise God, in, in, in the wilderness. God has the promised land. Hallelujah. We don't have to camp out and die in the wilderness, but we can go under the other side. Hallelujah. Praise God and be what God wants us to be. If we just get back, you know the song just take me back, Lord, to where I first believed. Now people don't fast. There ain't much fasting going on there. But I remember when people went on Thursday, fast, Thursday, 50 days, 60 days, 100 days. They were fast. And they fast and prayed. And they had such a peace with God. Yes. And you know what? When you got around, you could feel something about. There's something about you that have that feeling about. You believe for men and women of God. Hallelujah. You can feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. But today, hallelujah, people are glory. Yes, they have. He said, look here, verse 7. That's my great, but there's a 7 there for that. He said, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you said, what does it mean to abide in you? Walking in his word. Live in that word. Live by the Bible. 
Walk not a Bible. The Bible says he looked what? What did he do with God? He walked. I how many years he walked with God? And finally he walked with God too much and they talked too much. And he got so close to God, first thing he looked up and said, Heaven, see you leaving. He said, Well, you hear him out of a cold in. Hallelujah. And he didn't have to see death because God just took him alive while he was walking with God. Hallelujah. And when we walk with God and talk with God like we used to, praise God, the power is going to come back. You cannot fast your words. You cannot give to God. You cannot go to church. You cannot do what God says. And then nothing happens. Oh, Brother G. A. Ham, he used to sing a song. He said, When I'm a runt up, I'm tied up. I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm a wrapped up. I'm tied up. I'm tangled up in God. I'm wrapped up. I'm tied up. I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm a wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. And you know what? God was moving. Revivals was breaking out across this country. I remember in 75 and 76 and 77. Five o'clock, four or five o'clock, I went to bed, two something. I sweated that all. I've been sweating that all week. Trying to get things done at home and things ready, packed and stuff. Me and my crew have been working on it all week. I sweated down three sets of clothes. Soaking something. But I went to this dream last night, early this morning. People would go to my church. We had a, a, a their daddy had died. And I, I actually was one done the funeral. I went to break for him any time he was old. But I dreamed. All of a sudden, I was just like by his casket. I thought, well, you know, we're going to bury him. And I thought it was going to be a a bad dream in the beginning. And all of a sudden, this man jumped up out of his casket. And he I'm not going to call trying to call his son, trying to call Brother Reed. I was going to tell everybody that he come back alive. The Lord moved about three years ago. I was in Walmart. I had to go down and do something in the morning. And there's some old people that I know that caught me right there at the door and talked me like to talk to me a lot. And we was talking there for just a minute. And this woman come flying by me. She had a little two-year-old girl, two, between two and three, I would say. And the baby was dead. It was blue. Wasn't breathing and wasn't no heartbeat. When your heart ain't beating, you ain't breathing, you're dead. 
You believe that? When your heart ain't beat, you don't. They have what they call a uh, crib death thing. Have you heard of that? These babies uh, suffocate and they die, and they, they, a lot of them they can't bring back babies to gone. Well, this baby, this little girl, was dead, but I didn't know she was dead. I didn't know she was dead. This woman was screaming, call 911. I mean, you could hear it all over the store. And all of them uh, people that, you know, has the walkie-talkies that come around, and them was calling ambulance and the paramedics. They lay that baby down in the carpet in the photo center. And now it's a money thing, now they changed it. But it was carpet. They laid it on that carpet out of the pan with it. I said, I said, ma'am, can I pray for your baby? And she said, yes, pray for my baby. She went right back to screaming. So I knelt down. But I still didn't know the baby wasn't, wasn't even alive. And I said, Jesus. That's the first thing I said. That's what I believe in. Amen. You call on old heaven if you want to. But I'm going to call on Jesus. And you can downgrade Jesus all you want to, but I'm going to lift him up. Yes, I And I said, Jesus, I still see that baby. And I knelt down and I touched that baby. Jesus touches people. And about that time, that baby took a deep breath. Like that. And the blue left. And that little baby started Thank you. crying. Thank you. And that mama picked up that baby. Hallelujah. And that baby yes. was breathing. Thank you, Lord. And, uh, and so we ain't have a pregnant that's got there. They took that baby to the hospital. Checked. Couldn't find nothing wrong with it. And so anyhow, and all the people started coming up and crying and shaking my hand and all that. And said, oh, thank you. I said, oh, no, you don't thank you. I said, you better thank God. I'm not getting his glory. I don't want it. And so I went on over to where I was headed to the customer service place. Another lady, she was trying to thank me. I said, no ma'am. I'm taking no, no glory. What God is doing. I mean, that's why God don't move a lot of times because he's praying to the glory. And so I got ready to walk out. I still didn't know that baby was dead. I thought it was just deep friend. I walked out, and this woman is a, what are they calling people that they, uh, a, a breeder, a Grecian. Yeah. And they said, did you know that that baby was dead? I said, what? Yes, sir, that baby was dead. Sir, you just raised it. And it's true. And I know that God is about to move. I know that we're going to see a dead yes, race. Thank you. And you know what? If we'll get connected to God, if we'll get where we used to be, and people that have never been there, if they will just get connected to Jesus, he said, he said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, he said, you shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. He said, Here is my proper glory, God, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciple. How do you know it's an apple tree? Well, it's low with that. How do you know it's a peach tree? Well, it's loaded with peaches. Hallelujah. We're going to have miracles. We're going to have a sign. That's the sign of apple trees, apple trees. Yes, uh, apple man, not lemon. Uh-huh. And he said, if you abide in me, then my word is abide in you. You can ask what you do. He said, but if you're not abiding in me, he said, you're not going to do that. I remember I used to co pastor a church in San Antonio, Texas, in 1980. We had 500 on Friday night. And with most Hispanic people. Brother Thomas was a pastor. He was a friend of mine. We had a great 
ready for it. And I was young. Coming up, but I they let me preach on Friday night. And I was like a co co pastor. He had like me and Brother Brooks. And but God was moving in a mighty way there. And we would pray all night long in that church to the sun come up. That was the theme of that church. And if we would just get back to the office, so I never prayed all night. Try it. So I can't come to church. Get in your living room. Throw your book on the floor and get on there and stay all night. Give us that nice, comfortable bed. Seek God and watch and see what God can I get an enemy? I want to read this one more one. I actually want to read this here too. In Luke. I'm going to read that in Luke first. You know what? Let me go to Isaiah first. I'll read this. I'll hurt you. Praise God for it. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. 